Thank you for joining me to make the hexagonal pocket fold card. You can find the templates linked below and if you love this video please do subscribe to catch this and many other more in future. So you're going to want to take your two printed off templates. I've printed these onto A4 um, and you're going to notice that there's solid lines and dotted lines throughout the templates. Now the solid lines are going to be your cut lines, the dotted lines are going to be your score lines. So what I've done is I've used a repositionable spray adhesive and I've adhered them onto some pale pink cardstock. Um, I'm then going to cut around or I have cut around the edge of these using my trimmer and I'm now going to bring in my scoreboard. So as you can see my templates are still glued onto the reverse. Let's bring my scoreboard in and I'm going to go over each of the score lines so starting with the horizontal ones. Now these are going to be mountain and valley folds. If you prefer to score your mountains and valleys on the on a particular side before folding it's as you have the pieces horizontal to you the vertical lines are all going to be mountain folds the um, diagonal lines are all going to be valley folds okay so some people would like to turn those over and do the valley folds from the other way I'm not worried I'm quite happy to score all of them in the same direction I'm going to use my bone folder once I've folded the along the score lines just to secure those anyway. Uh, I am going through both my paper and my cardstock with a scoreboard. You can do this quite easily as long as you're not using really really thick cardstock you should be fine. There we go just flip your templates over just make sure that you've got all your score lines there lovely. So we'll put our scoreboard away And I'm just going to gently remove my template. Be gentle because although it's a repositionable glue, it can still sometimes um, tear your paper or your cardstock underneath just a little bit. So just a gentle pull on that should release it nicely. And you shouldn't get too much residue left on there. Now, turning these over so that I have got a solid rectangle with no diagonal line on my top left. And I've got a solid rectangle with no diagonal line on my bottom right. That means that you've got the two large tabs on either end and you've got your smaller tabs running through the middle. So let's now fold these score lines. So taking the top piece first of all, um, the top one is the one with the tabs but it doesn't really matter because you can flip them around and do them the other way if you want to. But you're going to make sure these, these vertical lines are all mountain folds. And this is where I'm going to use my bone folder just to really secure those make them nice and strong and then the same with your tab so your tab at the end here is going to be a mountain fold so this is kind of all bending into itself at the moment and these tabs along the bottom I can just do these with my fingers along all three like so and then just run over the top of those to burnish those down then I'm going to do the same with these ones. So all three vertical lines are going to be mountain folds. There. So now all of my diagonal lines are going to be valley folds. So they're going to be the opposite. So I'm going to press them down and again secure with my bone folder. Make that a nice strong crease. go leaving it to fall into shape itself and one more there we go if you prefer not to use a paper template and you'd like to use an SVG for this where everything's already kind of glued together just one piece there is a video I'll link it just up here now this is the video that's going to take you to um, an SVG version of this card template um, and it also links in the description the SVG file download over on my Facebook page that you can grab and use at the end of that video there's also a description on how to take those files into the brother workspace and the cam um, the Cricut workspace as well to be able to uh, make your score lines the hashed lines before you send it to cut so now we want to adhere our tabs you can use red line tape for this or you can use a wet glue. I prefer to use a wet glue because you get a little bit of wiggle time with it. Um, but a red line tape or another double sided tape would be fine. 
Um, at the minute I'm in a nice warm room so this is really going to adhere quite quickly. Um, a double sided tape sometimes, although it grabs very quickly, sometimes I find with heat in, after a little while it can come apart again. Um, I mean after weeks sometimes it just tends to kind of lose its grip a little bit so for something like this that's going to be moved around a lot then you want to make sure it's going to stick fast. Now I've got a little bit of residue on my cardstock here as you can see little bits coming off that's from the spray adhesive so just giving those a rub with my hand like so that's going to remove all of that. So now we want to fold this in half and you'll notice you've still got a big tab on either side so again glue on each tab there we go i'm using a pink frog glue applicator i'll try to remember to link that in the description for you there we go folding that over and gluing the front to the back and the same on this side as well so with the pink frog glue applicators you do have to put your own glue in I'd recommend uh, Cosmic Shimmer, the Creative Expressions Cosmic Shimmer glue or um, Scissors Express glue is also very good or Pin Flare Book Binding glue or brilliant for grabbing paper and cardstock really quickly. Okay, so what you'll notice now is you have a blank rectangle, the diagonal lines and when you flip it over your blank rectangle is on the other side but as you twist this over your blank rectangle is always going to be facing you on the left hand side. Now, because you've already done your score lines, if you gently start to push the two ends together, what's going to happen is just following along with the where the score line should go. So your diagonals are valleys and your straight lines are mountains. This should start to fall into itself. So just follow that around, pressing gently, making sure everything's fitting together nicely, nothing's catching. There we go. So I can now just take my, bo my bone folder or my scoring tool so you can see as it folds down into a hexagon you can go along and you can just press down everything just burnish everything and that's going to make sure all those score lines are nice and sharp exactly where they should be turn it over and you can do the same there as well lovely okay so now we've got our hexagon shape and what you'll notice is as you pull the two corners that will open up now at the moment we don't really have anything in the way of pockets in there we want to add those pockets in so this is where you need to take another cardstock now it can either be the same cardstock as you've just used or it can be a completely different color I'm going to use for this one the same cardstock as I just used and what you need to do is cut yourself a panel that is almost exactly the same size as your rectangle um, maybe just a millimetre or so smaller on each edge because it's going to go inside your card. So I'm just going to place this over the top. I'm going to take a pokey tool and I'm going to mark the two areas where I want to cut. So I use a pokey tool rather than a pencil because of course a pencil I then have to erase the lines with and I don't want to worry about erasing lines. So I use a pokey tool and cut along that line and there's nothing to get rid of afterwards. So now as you put this into your trimmer it's a good idea now to make a note of the measurement. So this is 6.6. .6. So I'm going to just take a pen or a pencil here and I'm just going to make a quick note of that measurement, 6.6 .6 centimetres. And trim that and pop that card stop to the side. And then again, I'm going to pop this in, just double checking the length, which side I'm using. There we go. And again, before I trim this, I'm going to note the length there. So that's 11.7. So 11.7 centimetres, put that to the side. So this panel can now go inside my card at the moment. So this is going to help you to create some pockets and to keep everything together so as it folds, it doesn't have the tendency to open up like so. Now this is going to go in the middle section. So on your back piece, it's going to go on the triangle that's um, at the left, at the bottom left of the middle 
rectangle okay so that's just take my pokey tool as you look at it you've got this triangle here so you're going to want to apply glue to that triangle there so again just using my wet glue open the card up a little and just apply your glue to that triangle pop your panel inside there we go and press everything down flat just for a moment now while that's drying I'm going to put some glue on the inside but on this triangle here okay so it's the opposite one still working in that middle panel but on the on the other side here so that's then going to glue to the front of this panel so glue just down here and again fold that closed just allowing that to all secure together just pop the lid on my glue because it's very warm in here today there we go now that should be secure enough now as you fold your card as you can see that middle is now holding together it still folds completely flat and as you pull the ends you're starting to create more in the way of pockets now you can use these as larger pockets but I'm going to create tags that just sit inside of these as well so that's where these measurements come in so the measurements that I made for this I'm going to make tags ever so slightly smaller than these that will fit inside these pockets now I've used the uh, Simply Made Crafts fabric paper to create a couple of tags here. I've put eyelets in the top and because this fabric paper is um, really pliable, you can bend it, increase it and give it lots of texture as well. I've used my Vintage Textures, sorry, Vintage Travel from Textures Collection to stamp the postcard on there. I've inked around the edges, popped an eyelet in the top and a little bit of twine. Now each of these, will now sit inside the ends the ends are not joined they will open up but they're quite tight so these are enough to hold your tags in place so you've kind of got your little hidden hidden messages in there now now these tags don't have to be tags they could be photos they could be gift cards anything like that you like so you can do some additional decorating in there also if you want to now for the front of this, I'm going to bring in um, my, some more of my textures range. I'm going to bring in the Mariposa collection. So I've got these beautiful papers here that I'm going to be using. Um, these are all from the Mariposa paper pad. And then I've also got the Mariposa layered die set. So this is going to be a beautiful butterfly that's going to sit on the front. So again, coming back to these measurements, because we know each of our rectangles are that size I'm going to create some mats and layers for this that's going to be using this size taking maybe just half a centimeter off of each one and that should bring each one small enough to sit nicely with a slight border around you can of course mat and layer inside as well but that's a good idea to do that before you do the construction rather than afterwards so I'm going to use the butterfly papers here that have this lovely pink in the background for all of the triangles shapes, but I'm going to use this plain book page for the rectangles on the front and on the back. Now I've covered everything in the pattern paper that I want to, I did just pop one little bit on the inside there, um, but now I need to add that really pretty um, butterfly that I'm going to put on the front, the big butterfly. I've cut the base from a black cardstock. This is again from the Mariposa collection. It's a layering butterfly. So I've cut the base, which is uh, two halves. So you can just use a half if you prefer, which I still might to be honest, because I think it fits really nicely on there. But I do need to have the others. So I'm going to cut two from the pale pink and um, both sides of the wings before I decide what I'm actually going to do, whether it's going to be a full butterfly or a half. So trim these from that same pale pink as I use for the base of the card, just to keep everything cohesive and matching together. So with the butterfly, I've decided I'm going to go with the halves. So I've got one half of the black butterfly I'm going to place just about here. It just fits really nicely on this size of card front if you can call it a card so one just there just gluing the body down then another one over the top just give it some dimension and extra layers 
There we go. Don't need to offset that because you've got the wings lifted up. Then I'm going to do the same with um, this. So let's see which one's the... That's that one. So this one needs to go down first. This is the left and right. Just gluing near the body there. And one more over the top. Again, lots and lots of layers and texture being added in there. And there we go. Now, lastly, I just need a sentiment. So I'm going to put a nice big sentiment strip over the top of all of this. Just allowing that but butterfly body just to settle there for a moment and finish gluing or finish drying rather. Uh, I'm going to put a strip of, this is red liner tape, so it's super strong, so it's going to hold my sentiment down. I'm going to put this down over the top, just along here. Top to bottom, the sentiment that strip is actually a little bit longer. Again, this comes from the Mariposa collection. Um, it's a stamped sentiment, so there's lots of sentiments within that collection. You can find all the details for the Mariposa collection, the stamps, the dies, the papers and everything else, all in the description below. So there we go. So take life one chapter at a time. So there we go. We've got the card with the beautiful butterfly on it with all the layers. We've got those lovely papers. And then when you open this up, of course, you've got your tags inside that can hold um, gift cards, it can hold photos, memorabilia, tickets and things like that, uh, little notes, additional sentiments, um, money if you want to gift money, whatever it may be. Um, so there you go, there's a really pretty card that you can be creating at home using the template. So in the description below you'll find the link to the template. Now this is printable over from Facebook so you'll need to go over there to grab it so print it off on your printer at home and get creating and I'd love to see the cards that you're making using this template and don't forget everybody I also have the SVG file um, format for this template that is again over on the Facebook page you can download that um, and I've created a video which I'll link above here right now and that's creating this card using that SVG file, so none of the hand cutting if you've got an electronic cutting machine. I made this one, let's say a masculine theme, again using textures, papers, but looking at the vintage travel collection.